Um, you know, you see things over time, whether it's John Brown and Harper's Ferry or other things. But um, in your opinion, what was and and they all? I'm not saying, and I'm not just spelling that none of those other events. But what what do you think was one of the most one of the biggest events that triggered the Civil War, in your opinion? Right, and and I know you guys know the answer to this, but the the thing that splitting the country it has been tearing the country apart since the Constitution. Um, if you really want to split hairs, you could say since 1820 is slavery and the issue of slavery in the United States. It yes, to your point, Derek, we have a industrializing North and we have a predominantly agrarian South. It's a slight simplification, though, to to say that's what's pitching the two country to the, the two sides together um, or against each other, I should say, because the South is on the verge of industrialization. They actually do have some fairly large centers of industry, Richmond, Atlanta, um, um, Charleston actually does have some interesting uh, his, industrialization going on there. But 80 percent of both armies, Union and Confederate, are farm boys. Mm -hmm. okay. Even with places like New York and Philadelphia and Pittsburgh uh, or the the cities of of Ohio and even Chicago is coming online by this point, the vast majority of the landscape and the population in the north are agricultural based still. OK, so both sides have predominantly farm boys in their armies, but we do have this single issue of slavery and more specifically its expansion into the Western territories that is tearing the country apart. The abolitionist movement has really ebbed and waned over the years, but by the 1850s, it's been growing very aggressive in the Northern states. The Southern states are increasingly afraid of this ever growing northern population and that eventually they would lose their power and influence in the house of representatives and thus lose control of how the country continues to expand westward and we've got to remember the southern states have really dominated american politics up until the mid 1850s primarily because of things like the three-fifths compromise that allows them to include three-fifths of an enslaved individual as part of their population. That allows them to have more representatives in the House of Representatives in there in Congress. And a majority of presidents have actually been elected from the southern states, particularly Virginia. Um, this is not a shot at the South. I'm in Maryland, the most northern of the southern states currently. Um, but this is how things have been developing. And after the Mexican-American War, 1846 to 1848, there is this huge chunk of land that has opened up to the United States for further uh, development, for further colonization, if you will, vast swaths of territory. And the South really sees this as a way of, look, we put a bunch of guys into this army that went into Mexico. We want our piece of the spoils. And the northern states are very concerned about seeing slavery expand into the western territories or north of the 3630 parallel. So it is this issue of slavery and the political maneuvering of the 1850s that eventually leads to war. And we would see things like the um, the Compromise of 1850, which basically guts the uh, Compromise of 1820. It also leads to popular sovereignty, this idea that the states themselves shall choose to be slave or free, which of course leads to the fighting and bleeding Kansas, which then of course leads to the rise of John Brown or John Brown's raid in 1859 and just domino, 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 domino until the election of Lincoln in 1860. 